Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 18th of September. PM Modi kickstarts special parliament session turns it short but historic. Death toll surpasses 800 in Bangladesh due to dengue outbreak. And Sri Lanka's economy shrank 3.1% in quarter two amid financial crisis. And now for all the details, the special session of parliament was kick-started on Monday as PM Modi initiated the discussion on 75 years of the parliamentary journey. The five-day long session, which began in the old parliament building, will move to the new parliament premise on Tuesday, where as per the tentative list of agenda, four bills will be introduced by the government. Prime Minister Narendra Modi opened the discussion on the parliamentary journey as the five-day special session of the parliament began on Monday. Addressing the lower house of the parliament, PM Modi said it was an emotional moment to leave the old parliament building, which has witnessed several historical decisions from abrogation of Article 370 to reservations for economically weaker sections. Recounting history, Prime Minister said, from Jawaharlal Nehru's twist with destiny to Vajpayee iconic speeches, the parliament was witness of various leaders presenting their vision of India. He said many bittersweet memories have been associated with the old premise, which has now become a shared memory and pride. <laughs> पता नहीं देश का क्या होगा चल पाएगा कि नहीं चल पाएगा एक रहेगा कि बिखर जाएगा लोकतंत्र बना रहेगा ने 500 लेकिन इस देश के संसद की ताकत है कि पूरे विश्व को गलत सिद्ध कर दिया वेल दिस बिल्डिंग इज फुल ऑफ मेमोरीज एज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर आल्सो सेड इट्स आल्सो फुल ऑफ हिस्ट्री इट विल बी अ सैड मोमेंट लेट्स होप द न्यू बिल्डिंग हैज बेटर फैसिलिटीज एंड मोर convenience for the members of parliament, new technology, all of those things, we'll have to see. But still, it's always uh, an emotional moment to leave an institution which is so full of history and so full of memories. The special session which began in the old parliament building will move to the new building on Tuesday. The government has so far listed four bills, including the legislation to regulate the appointment of chief election commissioner as part of the legislative business. Opposition lawmakers are also seeking passage of the Women Reservation Bill. And India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar this past weekend highlighted that Prime Minister Narendra Modi took the lead and was very clear about the African Union becoming a permanent member of the G20 grouping. India amplified the voice of the Global South during the G20 summit in New Delhi under its presidency of the bloc. Addressing students of Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology in Kerala, Jay Shankar said Africa has gone through enough suffering and they needed a helping hand. When we became president, he was very clear saying, look, uh, enough of this, we will do something, I will take the lead. And which is what he did. I mean, he wrote to the other 19 leaders saying, this is India's firm view, please let me know, you know, uh, where you stand. And I think it forced the issue. PM Modi has called the inclusion of the African Union in the G20 a significant stride towards a more inclusive global dialogue. He stated that India was looking forward to collaborative efforts that benefit the entire world. The African Union consists of 55 member states. Moving on, a prominent political activist has highlighted Pakistan's nefarious agenda behind the Anantanag encounter in which three Indian security personnel were killed in action. A report. In the aftermath of killing of three Indian security personnel during anti-terror operations in Jammu and Kashmir's Anantanag last week, activist Dr. Shabir Chaudhary has said that a rise in terrorism is being designed to create chaos and divert attention from uprisings in POK and Gilgit-Baltistan. 
He pointed out there has been massive anti-Pakistan sentiment in its occupied territories due to ongoing economic crisis and Pakistani agencies had to do something to divert people's attention. And जिस तरीके से महंगाई है बिजली का जिस जिस तरह लूट सूट जारी है उसके खिलाफ जो है ये मजारी हुए हैं और पाकिस्तानी जो स्टैबलिशमेंट है पाकिस्तानी गवर्नमेंट है जो उनकी एजेंसीज हैं दे वर अननर्वड बाय दिस तो उनको डाइवर्शन की अशद बहुत जरूरत थी तो उन्होंने डाइवर्शन पैदा की क्योंकि तहकीक करने के लिए या तफ्तीश करने के लिए आई डोंट नो भी क्या-क्या करना पड़ेगा उनको तो नतीजा क्या निकलेगा जब इस तरह की लोग हरकत होगी तो लोगों के में गम और गुस्सा आएगा और गम और गुस्सा वो जाहिर किसके खिलाफ आएगा बहुत से लोग कहेंगे कि इंडिया ने हमारे खिलाफ ये किया वहां मान से नान साफी हो रही है हमसे हम पर जुल्म हो रहा तो जाहिर है कि इन्हीं जिन लोगों ने ये प्लान किया अटैक उनके तो उन पांचों उंगलियां घी में और सर कढ़ाई में है India also blames Pakistan aids terrorists to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley a charge Islamabad denies The Kathmandu District Attorney Office on Sunday registered case against 29 people over their involvement in the 61 kilograms gold smuggling case local media reported among those implicated in the case nine are reportedly foreign nationals of China India and Belgium Authorities in July this year had confiscated over 61 kilograms of gold which had arrived in form of cargo consignment from Hong Kong. So far the investigating agencies have arrested 26 people for their involvement while three others implicated in the case by the attorney office including a Chinese national are on the run. And the death toll due to the deadly dengue outbreak in Bangladesh has surpassed 800 this year. The Directorate General of Health Services has informed that 804 deaths took place due to dengue fever in 2023, including 211 in September and 342 in August. As many as 10,437 dengue patients are currently receiving treatment at hospitals across the country. Till date, 167,684 dengue cases have been recorded this year. There is no vaccine or drug that specifically treats dengue, which is common in South Asia during the June to September monsoon season. It is caused by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which thrives in stagnant water. Symptoms include high fever and joint pain and vomiting. Moving on, Sri Lanka's economy shrank 3.1% in the April to June quarter. Official data has revealed as the country struggles to claw out of its worst financial crisis in decades. The downturn was driven by high inflation, a depreciating currency and lower purchasing power. Sri Lanka's central bank projects that GDP will shrink by 2% this year, having contracted 7.8% in 2022 after the island's economy fell into a severe foreign exchange crisis that decimated growth. This comes as an IMF delegation is currently in Sri Lanka for the first review of its bailout program which will require progress on restructuring the country's bilateral and bondholder debt. And India's Mumbai is popularly known as the city of dreams with many rags to riches stories. However, none is more remarkable than the story and journey of Malisha Karwa, a girl from the slum who has turned into a teenage model and internet influencer. 15-year-old Malisha Karwa once lived with a family in a waterfront slum in Mumbai, but thanks to a chance encounter with American actor Robert Hoffman, who wandered into their slum and gave her a breakthrough she needed, and now the family has moved up into a rented one-room apartment. Hoffman posted videos of Malisha's cheeky but winning personality and moments of her teaching him how to speak Hindi with a voice that burst with happiness. belying the hardship she's known having lost her mother at a young age leaving her father to juggle his day job while raising two children knowing the power of the internet hoffman helped her launch a gofundme campaign since then malisha has become a model and social media influencer using the hashtag the princess from the slum in some of her post My life uh, is means uh, I feel I'm very happy of myself that uh, before I used to stay stay in a hall but now I have nice house for myself and now I will take a very big house for my family on rent and I'm uh, I'm excited for that. 
In March, a luxury Indian cosmetics brand, Forest Essentials, part owned by L'Oreal, chose Malisha as the face of its Yufti campaign, celebrating young Indian women. She hopes this will be the springboard to a career as a model, though she intends to concentrate on her studies until she finishes school. Her breakthrough reflects gradually changing attitudes in a country where advertising, popular culture and Bollywood films glorify fair skin as an ideal of beauty. हमारे बच्चे ऐसे परिस्थिति नहीं देखे और आगे के दिन में वो लोग को मतलब हमारी दुआ है कि कुछ कामयाब बने। Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India, breaking news and views from India.